Are you? I'm on. I'm out. I'm on. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, I'm going to do the same as I did last week, really. Uh, um, I'm going to do a little bit more roughing out on this. Um, I only. Um, um, I've done about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes work on it just um, uh, in the, since last um, Friday. And um, I've been making, uh, doing these grave, this grave plaque and grave, little gravestone and finishing off um, a bit of carving this week. So it's been quite, quite busy. Um, it's rather beautiful again today it's been really nice so anyway um this is uh also since last week um yvonne stuck the lion the clay lion's head in the in her kiln and so it's it's been fired and it's come out it's come out this rather nice um color uh she says it's come out that color because it was fired at a really high temperature and it's come out with only kind of a couple of cracks, but it hasn't broken. And I'm really, it's a really pleased. And what I'm going to do eventually with it is um, uh, put some fixings in the back of it because it's hollow. We hollowed it out the back, put some fixing in the back so it can be hung on a wall. And uh, but in the meantime, this is really weird. You see these little bees. This little bee here, I don't know whether you can see it, is a burrowing bee. It's a wall solitary bee. And what they're doing is that they are going in that... Can you see that hole, Tom? They're going in this hole here uh, and exploring, <laughs> trying to find places to... Anyway, that's what, one of the things that caught my attention this morning whilst I was working. So whilst I was making that moulding on me... Um, on, on this gravestone right so the kind of the big kind of removing large amounts of stone in one go um, we've done and now we go to the next next stage which is kind of roughing out um, and I'm using um, this is a carving hammer so it's a light light hammer and I know I was blaming my father-in-law for um, for where my lump hammer was last week but the truth of the matter is is I left it um, over the road it, um, I was tearing down a fence with it uh, uh, yeah anyway so uh, yeah I've got a, a, an acre over the over the road and I'd had this fence up anyway you don't you don't need to, <laughs> need to know that. don't need to know that anyway oh I just oh bees and yeah fences right um, so um, so what I've done is is I, I've carved this away. So I've carved this away. Oh, let me chop this away. And I've carved this face, which is kind of mirroring this face all the way down to here, and that that high above the um, the wall line. And um, and so what I'm going to do now is I've drawn a, a roughly I've drawn the kind of shape of the muzzle. And um, I'm just going to start um, ragging out. So. Oh, I see. No, it's quite happily. So. so I'll do this for a bit. And then I'll... Um, Cut a letter or two, and we will cut a letter. So the chisel I'm using is, um, um, apart from being painted pink, to differentiate from um, my students' chisels, because a lot of my students bring chisels to the workshop. Um, is a, a, a kind of uh, a square shank ragging out chisel. It's a, a roughing out chisel. It's um, 
tungsten tipped it's uh, kind of four or five mil wide and it was um, made by John Parsons from JP Masonry Supplies um, where I get most of my kit and um, yeah it's got a square shank which is unusual but uh, I quite quite like it and with it what's interesting with this chisel is that you don't you're not just you can draw in it draw in the material or draw through the material so you can't you don't you can use it not just to blast bits of stone out blast bits of stone out but you can um, push through the material liking that very much. So this is a point um, and it doesn't cut. knock bits and pieces off the clay I kept. That's a, yeah, the other way. So I've never I've never um I usually just use the maquette as a as a um I hope I'm not repeating myself. I use them I usually use the maquette, a maquette as a kind of sketch. So I, I rarely um go to this finish. I just um, model out the basic shapes and make sure that they work. And then I move on to the um, uh, move on to the stone, and and so this is the first time that the clay hasn't been sacrificial. It, uh, yeah, so I turn it this way and fire fire the bits of stone in this direction. interesting um, so with any natural with any natural material you get kind of you start to become familiar with it and it's becoming clear that this I mean this is harder this is harder than um, maybe this area that I cut out before or this I'll just find out as I go. Yeah, 
one of the things, one of the advantages of using this tool is that um, the temptation is, I mean, you can approach it like this. You can carve the tip of the nose and then just kind of like work down. And I've seen people do that and it's a really effective way of um, carving. But you're, you, you commit, you've got to be really sure that the shapes are where they're supposed to be. Um, whereas if you, if you um, use a point, then you're in the process of carving you're left with all this, um, all this rough material, this rough surface, and it's easier to see into the rough surface than into the flat plane. It's for me, for me, it is anyway. And um, uh, uh, the temptation is to kind of go for the security of the details. So what I'm moving away from now is 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 these straight lines. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm kind of removing these straight lines. It's these planes, so that um, I've got um, better chance of seeing the material. Now there comes a point where you start start measuring, and um, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> You use bits of kit like this, um, but we'll come on to that. I mean, at this rate, we'll be going for ages. But I mean, um, you, you can, uh, um, you know, t take a take that measurement. And that might be a useful measurement from the tip of the nose. So you've got um, from the tip of the nose to the tip of the ear. <laughs> 